Good morning, y'all. Well, it is day 56 and uh, stayed last night at the rice field shelter. Uh, had a little bit of a mice problem. Uh, one got on my arm, but uh, nothing horrible. And got up early this morning, a little after five, and uh, have a plan of action. I'm gonna try to do a big day today, 25 miles. And then tomorrow, 18, and uh, making our way toward the hostel that I don't wanna stay at, that I mentioned yesterday. Um, and I think I'm gonna get a shuttle there uh, with uh, another fellow who has similar ideas and uh, get down into Daleville for resupply and maybe even just a, a little hotel or something that we can find. And, um, yeah, do laundry, get cleaned up, eat some real food. So that's kind of the plan over the next two or three days. But uh, yeah, what's up? And on the trail around 6.15, got to see the sunrise. It was really pretty. Where that shelter is, you can actually, you know, look to your right in the morning and see the sunrise. And, and the, last night we were looking to our left and was able to see the sunset. So pretty nice setup there. So that's the plan. Let's get going.
So today, I want to talk a little bit about something that a lot of people have asked me when we, you know, are on the trail, like, where do you go to the bathroom? And the answer is almost anywhere you want. But in fairness, there are usually an outhouse uh, or some outhouses or privies, as they're called, at the shelters, although the shelters are miles apart. And as you might guess, some are nicer than others. Most are constructed of wood. They're about three feet by four feet and about seven feet tall. And there's a bench seat and a cutout for your bottom. Um, there's a three to six foot deep uh, trench underneath. And to be honest, flush indoor toilets were not used on large scale in this area until the 1900s. But the privy was still a common item in rural areas, especially Appalachia, until the 1970s. I actually went with my parents and some uncles and cousins to install indoor plumbing, which included a toilet and a shower in my grandparents' house in northern Alabama in 1971. But during the 1930s, it was Franklin Roosevelt's WPA program that built over 2 million outhouses across America. It was usually a three-man team. They would build one in about 20 hours, and the family only paid $5 for the materials, and the labor was free. And it was Eleanor Roosevelt, FDR's wife, who had a huge role in improving sanitation in the countryside, especially here in Virginia. And from this, the outhouse coined even more nicknames like the Eleanor and the White House. And now you know the rest of the story. Hey y'all, so as you can tell it's a little dark tonight. It took us um, a lot longer to go the 25 miles than we anticipated. Uh, we knew there was one big two and a half mile uh, uphill incline by 20% grade. But once we got to the top of that, <clears throat> it looked as though we had six miles of relatively flat terrain. And it took us about five hours to go across the six miles. It was just nothing but a boulder field, just jagged rocks. And we couldn't make any time on that. So we lost a lot of time. So yeah, we started hiking this morning at 6.15 and we pulled in here at 7.30 p.m. tonight. So it's a tough day, um, 25 miles, but, um, but the terrain was really tough. This was much tougher than the 26 mile marathon I did into Damascus, much tougher. It was also a hot day. It reached uh, 79 degrees, and so we were pretty hot and sweaty when we were going up that hill, which was around 2.30 in the afternoon. So, um, yeah. But um, 
Yeah, I'm hiking with a, um, another uh, hiker, which is the first time I've ever done that. Hike the entire day with one person. I usually, we get separated or something, but um, trail name is uh, Sleepy. And um, yeah, we had a good day. And uh, we're trying to sort out, we're, I think we are gonna try to do another 19 miles tomorrow. And then the next day, 17 miles, and that will put us pretty close to Daleville, Virginia. And we're gonna probably go down and share a shuttle and split a room the whole bit, just save the money. And then the next day, go back and slack pack and even stay in Daleville another day. So that's kind of the tentative plan right now. But uh, yeah, 25 miles under the belt. So uh, that was um, our day and we just got through eating dinner and we're hanging bear bags and fixing to go to bed. So hope everybody had a nice day wherever you are. And again, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye y'all.